So in your system you have A plus B is going to yield C plus D. Reactants on the left, products on the right. And all this arrow going back and forth means that the reaction is taking place and it's like it's at equilibrium. Nothing else is really going on until, for example, you increase the concentration of A. Well, if you increase the concentration of A, remember this is the left side and this is the right. You're going to have to do something to balance out this reaction to ease the stress on the left you're going to increase what's on the right. Think of an equation uh, in math. It's like a scale, right? Well, chemistry is the same way. Remember those old school scales? To keep it from tipping and to keep it at, at equilibrium, if you increase something on the left, you got to do it on the right, right? That's why when you increase A, you're going to have more C and D, and you're going to eat up some of the B. So B is going to decrease. Let's say you had A plus B to yield C plus D. And now you instead of increasing A, you increased B. Well, again, increase the left side. So what does nature do? Well, it increases what's on the right. And you're going to eat up some of the A. So if you increase B, it's going to push the reaction this way so that now that you ha now you have more C and D since you're adding more reactant to it. So let's see what happens when we increase one of the products. If we increase D, well, what's going to happen to the left side? Yeah, we're going to have to increase it, right, to balance it out and you're going to get some some uh, a little bit less D to also make up for the increase in uh, or less C rather to make up for the increase in D and let's say you had uh, after the reaction come to equilibrium we have an increase in C. Well, increase the right. Yeah, you we're going to have to increase the left too. And D is going to slightly increase. If we increased D also, we would just get more of an increase in A and B. Right? So it, it depends on what you're adding to it. It's definitely going to affect the other side in the same way. And the more you add, the more it's going to push the reaction. Right? Now let's say instead of adding something, we take away uh, A. So we lower A. Now it's not, the reaction is not going to be pushed towards the right anymore. It's going to be pulled towards the left since we're taking something away. Okay, more C and D is going to react. So this is going to decrease as well on the right. And we're going to get an increase in B since more C and D are acting together, but we're taking the A away, right? And in a similar case, if we have, I'll just randomly take away one of the products after this already reacted. For example, let's say we take away D. Well, if we take away something on the right, now the reaction is not going to be pushed anymore. Again, it's going to be pulled into this direction so that more A and B are reacting and it's going to result in a decrease in A and B. With an increase in C, since we're not removing the C, we're only removing the D. Okay. So th those are the different scenarios you can have a reaction is either going to be pushed in one direction if you're adding it 
to one side, it's going to be pushed to, to the other direction. If you're taking something away, either a reactant or a product, it's then going to be pulled in that direction, of whichever one you're, you're, you're decreasing. Okay. So what if you had an endothermic reaction where heat needs to be added to one side? in order for the reaction to take place and you take away the heat well again if you lower the heat you're not going to get as much A and B forming together to make C and D or reacting together rather to form C and D and C and D is going to decrease okay A and B is going to increase because you're taking away that heat for them to react together. All right. Now let's say you had an endothermic reaction which again thrives on heat, right? And you added more heat to it. Well, if you add more heat to it, you're going to have a greater reaction of A and B so the concentration of A and B separately is going to come down to increase more C and D right like if you add extra heat to fry uh, let's say fry an egg right you're going to get less of the original and more of the fried egg the products okay now if you have A plus B again to yield C plus D and now you don't have an endothermic reaction you have an exothermic reaction which means that heat's being released as C and D's your products are being produced and you cool down the entire system so you lower the heat well if you lower the heat or take it away, you're going to be pulling the reaction in this direction, right? So you're going to have to lower what's on the left side to balance it out, and you're going to have an increase in C and D. And let's say the final scenario you could have is A plus B yields C plus D again in an exothermic reaction that yields heat and now you add more heat to the system well if you add more heat to the system what's going to happen well yeah you got to increase the right you got to increase the left so it's going to push it in that direction and you're going to have a decrease in C and D so those are all the different scenarios on how concentration and temperature can affect the system. That's at equilibrium. If you're adding something to it, it's going to push it to one direction or to, to, to the opposite direction. And if you take something away, it's going to pull it in that direction. So that's pretty much it. So let's say we had N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3 plus 92 kilojoules per mole. Exothermic reaction, right? Now, if we add nitrogen, what's going to happen? Well, if we add nitrogen to the system, we're going to get more ammonia, right? And more heat. Similarly, let's say we add
more hydrogen to the system. We're going to push the reaction to the right, right? To get more ammonia and heat. We read it again. And now let's say the amount of ammonia is being decreased in this reaction. Got to write that heat in there. What's going to happen? Well, if we decrease it, it's going to be pulled in this direction. It's not going to be pushed anymore, right? And you're going to have a decrease of both reactants on the left and an increase in heat. Now we have rewrite it again and plus the heat. What's the other scenario? Yeah, well, if it's an exothermic reaction and we cool it down, well, if we cool down the right side, we take something away from the right. We take heat away, we're going to create more ammonia. Because if we take something away from the right, we got to take it away from the left to keep it balanced. And on the right, more ammonia is going to be formed since more of these are reacting together. And N2 plus 3H2. Rewrite it again. To yield 2NH3. Plus the heat. Now if I add heat to the system, what's going to happen? Well, if I add heat to it, if I add something to the right, left side is going to increase, and you're not going to get as much ammonia being formed. So th those are really the different situations um, that you can have with Le Chatelier's principle. and. Uh, Again, it's, it's a pushing and pulling depending on if you're taking things away or adding things. In this case, since I added heat, it would have pushed the reaction more this way, right? And here, since I decreased the heat, it was pulling the reaction to the right. And... Uh, Similar, um, similar to the other scenarios. So it's really just a pushing and pulling, depending on if you're adding something or taking away. It doesn't really matter whether it's concentration or temperature, and even pressure when you're dealing with gases. Got it. Good.